Let's talk about Maple Valley, a game that's all about throwing parties to celebrate spring. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a game that's the follow-up to a game I talked about recently, which was Creature Comforts by KTBG. This one is called Maple Valley by KTBG. You see Creature Comforts even is written on the box. So this is the follow-up to a game I talked about not too long ago. And this is another review copy that I picked up when I was at Breakout. And then I did go ahead and purchase the deluxe resources to go along with it. So Maple Valley, just like its, its predecessor, Maple Valley is a game for between one and five players. It works for kids age eight and up, and games take about an hour to play. Let's take a deeper look at Maple Valley by KTBG. This is another light game where, well, you, you will find yourself probably sitting and looking at your cards and thinking about what do you want to do next, trying to plan ahead. So there's some strategy to be had here. It's not too, too complicated, but the choices are complicated enough, I would say. Uh, it's probably obvious just from looking at the board and, and, and the artwork and the meeples that this is a game that takes place in the Creature Comforts world. But rather than trying to build that cozy cottage for the winter, this time you're putting things together. You're crafting favors that you're going to bring with you to some celebration that spring is finally here. Bonfires, there's a square dance. As you build favors, as you craft things like snacks or some other kinds of foods, maybe you'll bring some entertainment with you or some artwork. You're going to put your player cubes on these festivities. And that's one of the ways that you can earn some victory points. You are once again trying to be the player who earns the most victory points through crafting favors. You definitely get points for those through earning patches that you'll put into your on your pack. Those might give you some victory points or some ongoing abilities. Uh, and then by placing cubes on these festivities, you're going to get victory points based on the number of cubes and some bonuses if you have the majority. The game is played over five rounds and it is a game where you are building up that tableau of favors that interact with one another and maybe give you some special uh, bonuses as you play through lanterns and if you've got paintings to go with the lanterns you'll get some extra victory points so the ingredients here are on the side and you're moving around the map trying to collect those ingredients it is still a game where the early bird gets the worm the first player is the early bird and this is the first player token a little bit of a different worm this time around and rather than the grown-ups getting those cottages ready, this time it's the kids. So the meeples are a little bit different too. So you've got like a, a, not an adult fox, this is a little kid fox. And all of the friends are little kids as well. And it's not a worker placement game in the way that Creature Comfort uh, was. Instead, you're going to be traveling around the map, moving your single meeple. You only have one meeple. You're going to move that guy around the map. And uh, eventually you're going to be doing that by recruiting friends and, and playing cards that allow you to move along various trails, in this case a forest trail. So it's movements that are dictated by card plays. It's very simple deck building because you are going to be recruiting those friends from a deck. You only start with one. So if you're playing as the red player, you're going to have one fox friend. That friend card can allow you to move along any of the paths but you can see that there are mountain paths and forest paths and paths through the water. So if you have a friend who's a frog, he's going to let you travel through the water probably. Uh, and, and then you're kind of trying to plan your route so that you can end on a spot where you can forage maybe for the resources you want. In this case over here, you're going to get some clay and some acorns or to activate some other space that allows you to do something. There are always going to be two outposts. Those are, are randomly chosen at the start of the game. Uh, these little resources that you get by moving along paths, those are randomly assorted at the start of the game. Uh, but you're always going to have a space here at the top of the board that sends you back to the village. So there's a place at the top and a place at the bottom. That's where you recruit your friends from. So there are a few different decks where you can draft cards from. One is the favor deck where you're going to get those things that you're going to bring with you to the party. Uh, one is the friends deck, of course. And then you've got this little square deck. And these are patches that go underneath your player board. Sometimes they give you some bonus based on the cards you have. 
In this case, it's an ability. You're going to get some victory points, but the ability is that you can always travel on a water path for free, basically. So it's one extra movement that allows you to get where you want to go. And the board is cleverly laid out. You're not, not going to find yourself trapped and, and not be able to move at all, although you do need to plan ahead in order to maximize the use of the friend cards that you have so that you can get the resources that you want and then move on to the next space where you want to be. So if I play all my water cards and I'm up here, I'm not going to be able to get to this space in the middle because I, I need another water card to do that. But I'm, I'm probably going to have a forest or a mountain card and then I can go down here instead. So there is some planning in terms of the movement and it does get, that's, that's one of the areas where we were kind of looking at the favors that we were trying to craft and what ingredients we needed. We were looking at the friends that you can draft from and figuring out what resources you need to buy those. Uh, and then we're thinking about the friends that we have in our hand and where are we going to be able to move each round of the game. Another thing I want to mention about this game, so it's not worker placement, you're moving these guys along these paths, you can't block other players by taking up a space, two players can be on the same space. Uh, the player boards are your backpack, <laughs> they're called your pack, but they've got different pockets here that just allow you to organize all of the resources that you're going to be gathering. So the resources go here, these little things called curiosities, which is usually how you attract a friend into your deck. Uh, you've got some bugs and some pebbles and things like that. You've got a spot for cubes. There's also a space in here where you can put map tokens, which give you one, it's kind of a wild card for movement on your turn. So as you play through the game, you're going to collect more and more friends for your deck, and those friends are going to allow you to move somewhere along various paths in the game. They also all have some ability. So sometimes you're going to get uh, an extra resource when you forage. Sometimes you're, you're going to get maybe an extra curiosity. You can choose like a pebble or a bug or something like that, which is going to allow you to expand your deck more and more. And then you're just going around. The, the round is over when everybody's sort of decided they've played all the cards or all the cards that they want to play. And then you gather up your friends again for the next round. And that's the game. It's a combination of activating those locations and building up a tableau to earn victory points and very basic deck building in terms of collecting those friends that are going to help you along the pathways on the board. But what skills are you working on when you play Maple Valley? Uh, well, it is a game where, like I said, you do have to think ahead about those moves. You want to make sure, okay, if I'm on this space and I want to get to this one before the end of the round, am I going to have the right cards in my hand that will allow me to do that? Um, and, and we did find ourselves really kind of puzzling over, and I only played this with grown-ups, but we were kind of puzzling over how are we going to maximize those resources and make sure that we get all the pieces we need uh, in order to craft the things that we've collected along the way. So if you are planning ahead, you're budgeting your actions, you're budgeting your friend cards that are in your hand, you're budgeting your resources to craft those favors that are going to allow you to bring more things to the party. So there's a lot of budgeting and there's a lot of planning ahead here. And when you have, whenever you're doing budgeting and planning and trying to tackle things in an organized way and honestly sustaining attention for an hour to play the game, we are talking about executive functioning skills. Those executive functions are the skills and behaviors that you need to be able to work towards a goal. Uh, and this one definitely does have that because you've got the additional uh, memory load or the additional planning load of thinking about how far can you get and where do you want to be at the end of your turn or at the end of the round. So you are thinking uh, a couple of moves ahead probably at any given time in this, in this game. Final thoughts though about Maple Valley. Well, I mean, it is clearly a game that's in the Creature Comforts family. It's very obvious. You're sort of doing some similar things, but it's different mechanisms that are allowing you to do that. Set a worker placement, it's, it's uh, meeple movement on the board and set collection and, and uh, you know, basic deck building. It's, it's even cuter, I would say, than the original game. I mean, you've got these little, they're not babies, but you've got these little childlike uh, animals that are, and, and the friend cards are great. You've got little muskrats and, and uh, a star-nosed mole. Like these creatures are also young kids. 
they're not the grown-up animals either from the other game. Uh, but so, I, I mean, it is super cute. And I do like that you've got those pack boards, the player boards, that keep everything organized, especially good for the younger players. Just keep everything separated and then you know what you have and what you can spend on any given action. So you've got rules that are pretty simple to understand and mechanisms that do work pretty well together. Uh, but it's still a strategic game where you have to think about and make decisions. At the same time, you're getting something from every action. It might not be the thing you want if you run out of cards and you don't have the right card to allow you to move on the right path, but you're always getting something on your turn. Are there downsides, though, to Maple Valley? Well, I, I mean, similar to the original game, similar to Creature Comforts, it's another game where you've got all these different pieces and parts and resources, and it, the game came with lots of baggies, but no organizer. So it's another game where everything's jumbled up in bags, which, which keeps things together, but there's no organizer inside, so it's just a pile of baggies inside the box, which for some, you know, does it does increase maybe the amount of time to sort things out and get, get everything organized and then put it all away again. Um, there's no simple organizer to help with setup. Um, the, the age range, once again, is optimistic. An hour-long game, that's a long time for an eight-year-old to pay attention. We talked about this in the last video where, you know, typical kid's attention span is going to be somewhere between three and five minutes per year. So an hour-long game is probably a tall order for an eight-year-old 10 or 11 year olds are especially if they're familiar with board games are going to be able to do quite well uh, but i mean this super cute childlike animals maybe that's something that's going to suck the kids in and uh, at least keep them going for a little while i would say that unlike the other game where it's worker placement and then you've got that that tricky part of maybe your your workers can activate or maybe they won't um, the movement planning in maple valley does make the game a little more complex. Maybe there's some more strategy and planning involved than there is in the other game. So again, you've got these, it's not super complicated, but you've got these advanced skills that you're practicing. It's good to practice those advanced skills. Executive functioning skills are important abilities. Of course, that's a part of the brain that keeps developing it into uh, early adulthood. Um, so it, it, these are good skills to practice. Although I do think with this game, if you're going to do well at it, you know, you, you need to already have some foundational skills there. And I think for the eight-year-olds, that might be a tall order. But that being said, the adults, well, I say adults, one was a teenager who we played with. The adults and the teenager who played this game, we all had a good time playing it. And we did like those friend cards. And, and the, the patches as well, they even have the little seams around the outside, having some ongoing ability that you could get. Uh, and these were pretty easy to access just by getting to a certain location. This was a fun game. Uh, for myself, I love worker placement, and so Creature Comforts is probably going to be my go-to over Maple Valley. But if you like those board movements and, and pathway planning, um, this is, a, a, I mean, this really uh, pushes all of those buttons, I would say. And, and deck building, what a good introduction to deck building. Now, you're not, you don't have super weak cards that are going to kind of need to be expelled from your deck, but um, you're kind of gathering things up, and that's what's going to allow you to take those actions. Uh, this is a good introduction, I think, to that mechanic. Um, very, very simplified introduction to the deck building mechanic. And then you've got that tableau building, which is more complicated. So we had a great time playing this game. We really did like it. Thanks so much to KTBG for sending uh, Maple Valley my way. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section of the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.